floating moon Here's to the silvery sea Most of all, here's a toast to you and to me And breakfast with Bob Pacho Man! Oh, welcome to day two of Breakfast with Bob It's our 10th anniversary of beautiful Huggles on the Rocks We are brought to you by Hoka Polar You can Velofix, Normatech, Active, Canyon, Form Goggles, Amp Human and we are a championship edition at Four Seasons Resort, Hualalai. And I think Sarah Crowley was with us two years ago there at Hualalai. Give it up for the great Sarah Crowley. How you doing, Sarah? Very good, Bob. Thanks for having me. Uh, it's great to be back on the island. And yeah, just looking forward to Saturday. You just seem so much mellower, right? Is this... Is it, you've been here for the fourth time, you sort of know the ropes a little bit? Yeah, I mean, we've replicated our preparation a few times now, and um, just getting to the island, I, I know what I need to do. We do a similar preparation each time, and yeah, just more comfortable with knowing where to go and what to do, and um, less of a deer in headlights this year, I think. <laughs> so uh, two years ago, you get third. You're on the podium, you're out at the Four Seasons, life is good, and Thank I know- Thank you for that, that was lovely. That, wasn't that fun? Yeah, it was good. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So last year, uh, you were you made a move, right? This is the world championship. You're on the bike, mm -hmm. and you decided to go for it. Well, how far into the race? Well, when I got out of the swim, I noticed that Daniela's bike was still there, and she wasn't kind of anywhere near us. I could sort of tell that they hadn't announced her as we were running towards the bike. So yeah. I thought, well, that's a pretty amazing opportunity if I could get up the road a little bit. Um, and so I wasn't quite with the front pack last year coming out the water. I was maybe 30 or 40 seconds down. So there was still a bit of work to do to catch up to the, the lead group of females out of the water. But once I caught them out, um, I think by the time we had hit just hit the top of Polani on the Queen K, I just thought, oh, well, now or never. So I, I went after it a little bit. And I did pay for it, but I feel like it's a world championship and no one's going to hand one to you. So no, you got to go for it. Yeah, and I think what probably was a bit of a unlucky f factor in that move was that the weather was good and so heading back into town um it wasn't favorable for me to have good conditions so you needed some wind you needed yeah, to be able yeah, to, to get a, a the, gap break the bunch up and right. and cause a bit of drama at the back or in the next group so yeah it didn't really quite work in my favor and you know i held it together and i still didn't have a terrible day but it wasn't really uh as good as what maybe I could have done had I perhaps raced a little differently. Maybe I would have been faster, but, you know, that opportunity wouldn't have been there to, right. to have a crack at the race. Well, it's funny because sometimes you're, you're on that, that thin line coming into the race where you're so fit mm. and then you get a little niggle or you get a, a yeah, cold a and you sort of had a little throat thing going on. And yeah, I mean, I, my husband picked something up on the plane. I sort of I ne never broke as a cold, but we were super worried that I'd wake up race morning with like, right. some terrible head cold. I don't know whether it impacted my moves on the bike, but maybe it like just sort of impacted a little bit in the run. I s still didn't completely fall apart, but maybe my heart rate was a little higher or something like this. But you know, it, uh, you know, at the end of the day, uh, by the end of the bike, I wasn't I wasn't there to to have a, you know, it didn't it didn't quite work out as as well as it could have. So right this year, maybe we try something different. <laughs> but right from there, you go to Argentina. And you are now, or you were, the South <laughs> American, you still are, yeah. regional champion by going down to, uh, down to Argentina and winning down there. Did you feel you had the race there that you wanted to have here? hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. So <laughs> I, uh, yeah, I had a really fabulous race there. I probably had one of my, I think at the time it was my best run so far off a uh, solo bike. What'd you run? I, I ran three hours flat, but it was off a solo bike, so yeah. I pretty much led wire to wire. Um, and the field was pretty strong as well. So a lot of us tried to back up um, fairly quickly. And I think it was six weeks after the race to, to get the spot for this year because yeah. the system had just changed. So, um, yeah, no one was quite certain as to how hard it would be to, to qualify and what we needed to, to do. And so, yeah, it was quite a competitive field. And, um, yeah, I feel like maybe that was where things went sort of a little a little smoother for me. But, you know... It, it, that's how racing can be. Sure. It's, it's not always easy to have everything go in your way, um, leading into a big, big yeah. event. What, what's Cameron Watt brought to the table as a coach? Well, we've progressively moved uh, forward with the swimming. Yeah. So when I first met Cam, we, I was pretty awful in swimming. So, <laughs> <laughs> say for example, in ITU, I'd be lapped out at the world level. Like I could do good at sort of continental level, but once you start moving into World Series, I, I it just so I wasn't you'd be competitive. you'd be coming out of water and they'd be I'd be lapped. Oh, I never got uh, technically. I never got lapped out, but. <laughs> 
but but you know it was of that ilk. So I was at the back right. of the field, and so um, we really completely reconstructed my swim stroke. Um, and you know, I mean, I, I guess we made gains early, but it didn't really stick for a good year. And then we saw some improvement in seventeen. Yeah. Um, but then I had the fracture that I had last year. Uh, Talk a little bit. Then where'd that come from? Oh, uh, I think I was just super excited after seventeen, and I just after wanted to be the third here. I wanted to be. As you want to win? Yeah, I always thought I was as fit as I was uh, after the break as I was the day before the Hawaiian Ironman in seventeen. <laughs> so I went a little bit. I learned from that, um, but I did probably push myself a little bit too hard. Yeah. Um, too soon. Um, we had renovations at home, so there's other stresses going on. You know, you, you can't use your, sleep in your own bed or right. just things happening all around. So, um, yeah, that was my own personal management problem, I think. Like, I, I really do. It's probably a regret of mine with my career is that I didn't manage myself better. Really? Yeah, I think so because I've never had that kind of injury and I was just overexcited and I wasn't myself. Um, and, and we even spotted it a little bit. So, I, I just didn't understand what was being what I was doing uh, and to be able to change it. So, yeah, and then it, I, my body changed it for me. So yeah. <laughs> How long were you laid up? Uh, it wasn't too long. Like, it was a pretty serious crack, but it wasn't um, – we managed it super well with um, just using various different – tools nowadays with uh, some of the fancy treadmills and things sure. you can use and so we managed it really well a um, lot of Zwifting and a lot of a lot of time on the turbo just easy stuff and probably eight weeks I think I tried oh, it's not bad it w- yeah I think I was maybe run well I think I was running it maybe 10 to 12 weeks I think I'd raced in Ma- it happened at the start of February and I raced at the start of May so I think that was only three months uh, and sometimes it, starting your season a little later isn't a bad thing yeah I mean psychologically last year I think it was fine but that whole time I was able to really bed down the swimming that we'd, we'd done yeah. and so um, and then just this year I made an additional change very early in the year it's been something that uh, I've always had a lot of trouble with is um, bilateral breathing um, and so it's helped uh just through lack of flexibility in my yep. back. So I did a lot of physio work earlier in the year. And uh, instead of, you know, paying catch up all the time, we were actually trying to enhance uh, my flexibility at the at the physio and at the um, masseuse by actually giving me some more range. So uh, typically you catch up <laughs> when you, and you're like, can you help me? <laughs> but we were actually, um, yeah, we got ahead and uh, that has then been reinforced. And now we're starting to see some gains from that because I've, I think the rhythm is you sure. know, it's, it's more steady and, and everything else. So, yeah, it's been a, a long time. I mean, it's three years and there's still improvement coming. It's really good. That's it's, it's pretty interesting. It's going to be persistent. Sw- <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, no one ever, imp- I never thought. You, know, you could like just swim, you improve could. your swim later yeah. in the game. That's, uh, yeah. that's pretty tough. So you go 2016, you're 15th, and then you jump to third here, mm. right? And in one year. Yeah. What the hell? Uh, yeah, so it <laughs> I had a pneumonia in camp. Uh, before fifth, before six, 16 the, yeah. sorry yeah so I had an oak like I was still only just out the office don't forget I left Deloitte yeah you were you had a real yeah, job yeah, yeah I, I was still were you an accountant yeah I think and I you are an accountant oh technically yeah technically <laughs> I don't trust me with you <laughs> not right now everybody here wants you to do their taxes oh my brain um, no look yeah I I was still working up until about March April in 2016 so I mean I think I got third at the regional championships in Cairns uh, that year but yeah. you know like we were still learning I was still changing my swim stroke and and the the volume of training from you know what you could manage while you're working to what you can do as a full-time athlete is very considerably different and yeah I was probably uh, just adjusting to that and I, I got a little sick and maybe didn't do the things that now I would do which is like sort of back off and listen to yourself sure. I was like revving it wow Kona whatever because oh, you're trying to squeeze it in around work yeah yeah and also just yeah it was just a, a new experience the whole uh, profession well, I mean I'd race professionally but taking it more seriously so I, I probably overdid it a little bit and, and I got quite sick um, so I was a little heavy <laughs> a lot heavy um, going into that race maybe eight kilos heavy no way <laughs> yeah <laughs> don't go looking for photos <laughs> so you you're still 15 me, though like, yeah yeah like it was okay I, what i took away from that experience was i had zero pressure no, and yeah. I, and i no one knew who i was it didn't matter i didn't care that no one knew i was enjoying it and i just wanted to come and watch because 
obviously coming from Australia there's a heritage of the Hawaiian Ironman with a lot of winners, right? But I hadn't really got to the point where I'd been following it that heavily yeah. at that point. So I didn't know a lot about this race in and I I mean I'd seen it on TV but I hadn't uh, I didn't know specifically what it looked like. I had never come as uh, to spectate. Right. I, I didn't or as an age grouper. Yeah, right? like I'd watched bits on T V but it not a lot. And so I um I knew that it was very uh, technically challenging with the conditions and everything else, but I just wanted to experience it and I, l I took away so many things uh, that the following year that you could that with like little things that I can you know uh, just experience that helps with the race, just where people go hard and what to look out for, and right. when, you know, and and these things, uh, yeah, they've helped me, um, and I think you can only you can only really get that from that experience, and I'm just sort of happy with myself that I didn't really take it too seriously uh in that first year and actually observed yeah was it hard to walk away from a real job and a real paycheck to take this risk in the first year it definitely was yeah yeah, yeah. yeah i mean um i was pretty well supported by the firm in making that decision and we did put it we we did it in a a sort of a a sort of a structured way where it was a leave of absence so i technically didn't not have employment right. uh, and then after time it was like well I think I might just keep doing this but yeah look I mean it's always going to be there um, yeah I had gone away once before when I did ITU so it wasn't totally a new thing to me to not be working um, but yeah of course it's it you know yeah it puts a little extra pressure on you to perform um, I think there's a, a happy amount of pressure with that like you don't want to be running around chasing races to to fund your your calendar but to some extent you do need to have some financial pressure to make it uh to, to make you uh do all the right things right. to perform so it's there's a there's a happy balance there i think with, Love with it. that yeah what are your expectations here well look i mean everything's been going well i probably say this every year um i'm happy i haven't had any any real issues with my build-up i've had a really good solid block of time uh just me and another training partner um a young lad who's was just keen to to get some you know experience training yeah. uh, with an Ironman athlete and and we trained really hard and we didn't have any drama and we just sort of got, got the groundwork done and I think um, yeah it settled me a lot I think this year I would say that although I've made improvements across the board um, I would say that probably most are more I think more level, yes. um, yeah, and just a bit more relaxed. And I think it's helped. Yeah, Love I think it. that's just eliminating the noise in the preparation has helped a lot with that. Love it. Well, hopefully we'll see you on Sunday. Yeah, yeah, looking forward to the race. And um, yeah, hopefully I'll be out there in uh, <laughs> four, the seasons. four seasons. <laughs> <laughs> we'll see. How about a round of applause for Sarah Crowley? <laughs> Pacho Man, take us out. <laughs> Woo! Pancho Man! Thank you, Sarah.